Uh, good evening, happy Thursday evening. It's time to. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta take the trash out. Today's Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to the gym uh, doing the lunch breaks, so I guess I'm good for muscle exercises. So, let's do some weaponry, okay? Let's, uh, let's say. You go to hiking, right? And there's this big bear, and all you have is knife, okay? Uh, so my martial arts, arts friends told me, um, you know, this back grip is stronger, and I agree, as opposed to frontal grip. But frontal grip, it's more dexterous, okay? Back grip, it's, it's a little bit more, it's stronger, but it's awkward, okay? So, uh, my friend, uh, martial artist, they told me, yeah, if you have two knives, yeah. One frontal grip, one back grip, okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's pretend we have two knives. We're fighting a bear, okay? Yeah. Okay, so. A bear, bear they, they will like charge at me, okay? Wait, I, I have to move to the side, right? Okay. Yeah. And I, I rather use this boost back grip, but if I have only one knife, right? Yeah. So bear charges at me, I have to move to the side, right? And then, yeah. Right? Or, yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> I have to do some thinking exercise, right? Yeah, hopefully I have two knives, then it be, yeah, bears have the ten clothes, right? Or they be like this, like, charge at me and try to knock me down and it's a lot taller than me, so, okay, so, yeah. It's, I don't know, okay. We keep practicing, okay? Some bear scenarios, so... Yeah, they should be good. Yeah, I was kind of embarrassed because I'm so not good at it. Oh well, we keep practicing, okay? Uh, thank you, let's take five minutes break, please.
Okay, good evening. Alright. Let's see. Yeah. So this uh, weapon in martial arts, we is very fun, right? And we uh, we do it, practice those martial arts in you know, a very sound, safe, safe, safely and legally, morally, right? I mean, I used to use like uh, back in the days, I used to use this blood stag knife when I was pr practicing dagger style martial arts, like uh, what's that movie the. Steven Seagal, um, I think that movie is called um, Under Siege, when Steven Seagal was doing this Dago style with um, Tommy Lee Jones. I love that scene. It, it was so beautifully, beautifully performed and filmed. <coughs> yeah, huge fan. It was just done so beautifully, this fashion. Um, Steven Seagal, yeah, huge fan. Uh, and Tommy Lee Jones, I think he learned some martial arts as an actor, and I think he was very good too, okay? Dago style, right? It was beautifully done. So practicing of this martial arts, well, nowadays I don't even use stag knife because it kind of looked too scary. I use wooden chopsticks, okay? So, so uh, like, I'm just imagining Fighting a bear, but I, I never will. Why? Well, my my shot isn't that good. Okay, and if Steven Seagal and a grizzly bear fight, with Steven Seagal having a dagger, I'm not sure if Steven Seagal would defeat the bear or not because bear for thick hide and blubber. It's just I I'm not quite sure if Steven Seagal can defeat. Or nine feet tall grizzly bear. I'm not sure about that. Okay, me definitely not. But it helps imagining a bear fighting a bear, just to have fun practicing martial arts, right? Yeah. So yeah, I do like this, like you know, this, like right, this, this, this. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, yeah, it's just, I, I gotta like very agile, right? Yeah, it's just Dago style. Yeah, it is like a constant of horrible, okay? But we have to practice martial arts, okay? It's, it's just the language of brute, all right? Yeah. And also, as you practice your martial arts, it strengthens your spirit, okay? And you feel more confident about yourself and you feel stronger. Okay, so there's a spiritual benefit of practicing martial arts, including Dago style. Okay, yeah. There's a lot of benefit of practicing martial arts. Okay, it strengthens your spirit and helps you with your self confidence. Overall, spiritual health. Okay, strength, spiritual strength. Okay, so that's great benefit of practicing martial arts. Okay. Including Dago style, okay, so <coughs> I just practice with chopsticks, wooden chopsticks, okay, but I can't feel stronger now <laughs> Great benefit uh, Yeah, cheers. Happy Thursday Now What else? Um, do we talk about So last night after the episode, I was watching this documentary about desert, African desert. It was about Namib desert in Namibia, in African country. And I can't, I really love those desert documentaries. It's so beautiful and dry. And those desert animals and plants. Uh, in Africa, they, it, it does rain, but kind of, you know, desert environment, it does rain, that's why there are plants and animals, okay. Um, otherwise, there will be no life form. And, uh, 
it does rain, okay, so it's for seldom, very early, okay. Then I realized, you know what, that's kind of like very similar to my life, okay, like if I date a lady, it happens like once a year, if that, right? And human are series, uh, visitors like you, uh, it's like, so how many visitors do I get per month? In this human race series, uh, I think it's like on average like once a week. I think it's about that. Okay, so thank you. So, oh, so Friday night I'm like Hunky Lee. Uh, how many times do I get visitors? Uh, maybe once a week. <laughs> so it's kind of like a dry desert area where it rains, but very seldom, very rarely. So yeah, I'm kind of like desert animal kind of. There's a kind of lifestyle, like uh, if I flatter myself, yeah, like John the Baptist, behold, there is this God's man, messenger, out there in the desert, preaching repentance, where there's nobody around. John the Baptist, okay, yeah. If I flatter myself, I will compare myself to him, okay. <coughs> so, let's talk about anger management, all right? Like psychotherapy, uh, in a human knowledge way, how, because some crimes are committed by anger, okay? Like domestic violence, sometimes, battery, assault, or bar fight, road rage, sometimes even murder, or mass, massacre, mass shooter, mass shooting situation, anger problem, okay? <clears throat> so, anger management. I don't know how psychologists, psychiatrists do that, um, so we we'll try to come up with our own human analytical way to how can we educate people who have some anger issue so that that person do not get angry anymore. Well, first of all, perhaps I can start with my own story. I used to have that problem. Road rage. I used to. No, I don't. How did I get out of that problem? Um, first of all, maybe moving from Anchorage to Wasilla and moving out from one bedroom apartment to a three bedroom house. More space, less people, more room that helped. Okay. And perhaps getting a higher paying job. Okay, or even some kind of promotion in terms of socio-economic level, okay? Or in general, aging, because I have less energy than way back when I was in my 20s, 30s. I'm 43, so I have less energy, so because I'm less energy, I get angry less, maybe. But I, see, I do see some individuals who are older than me who have some anger issue, okay? So how can we resolve, how can we educate people who have anger issue? What would be the solution, okay? We can come up with some couple, okay? Let's take five minutes break, okay? And then we'll talk about it. Some solutions. Yeah, angle management class. You know, human knowledge go away, okay? Yeah. Let's do that, okay? Sounds like a good topic to talk about, okay? Yeah, crime prevention. Or happiness. Happiness in general, okay? Study of happiness. Hmm?
Okay. So we picked our topic. Very good.
So, um, human error score angle management. Okay. Let me tell you how I got out of that angle problem. Okay. Uh, it may not work for everybody, okay? Let's qualify that. Um, so, first of all, I'm sorry if I would offend anybody, okay? But in human analogy, we just don't have time for political correctness, okay? So I apologize beforehand if I will offend anybody, okay? I, I have to apologize beforehand, okay? So, uh, okay. Well, let's talk about Mr. President Trump. He went all the way up to the, on top of the world, like United States presidency, but he was still a very angry man, right? So obviously moving up in the socio-economic hierarchy, that does not quite solve anger issue, huh? Because I look at President Trump, he was angry all the time, right? Even when he was the president of the United States, the highest place, right? But he was angry in this year, okay? Uh, he could not tolerate criticisms by like CNN journalists and Democrats who make fun of him. He couldn't take it. He would get angry, right? He had anger problem. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter stone, right? Yeah. So socioeconomic promotion, that doesn't quite solve this resolve anger issue huh okay good so that's not a solution okay i think the solution probably the so kind of solution i recommend um learn how to rest and perhaps some good religious teachings like christianity right by the way i appreciate catholicism protestantism okay they do good jobs like charity Okay, I am their beneficiary actually. Okay, yeah, they help our poor people, and I was poor. Yeah, and they are good educators too. Kept in Catholic church, cathedrals, and uh, Christian church, Protestant churches. I think they are pastors. I think they are great educators, teachers. Okay, cheers to them. All right. Yeah. So yeah, Jesus saying. Love your enemies, pray for your enemies. Right. Yeah, that's very difficult teaching to abide by. But me, now that by now, I'm kind of used to doing that. No. Yeah. But of course, sometimes if some people are angry at you, uh, at some point, uh, you need to stop them. Okay. By some civil and rational counter argument sometimes that is necessary to teach them a lesson okay that is sometimes necessary okay yeah turn the left cheek right cheek it does not always work okay because jesus also said yeah if you brother or sister if they commit sins rebuke them and correct them yeah sometimes we need to do that okay There are times when, yeah, you turn the left cheek, right cheek, yeah, sometimes you do that, but other times you have to stop them and correct them verbally. Yeah, yeah, different situations require different remedies, okay? What else? So yeah, some enhanced social skill, being textful, social skill, communication skill, right? Also patience, tolerance. Also, some courage to stand up to the bullies, uh, bu whatever, office bullies, or bullies can be your family members, or your friends, or your acquaintances, colleagues, okay? Yeah. 
have courage to uh, stand up and correct them. Okay, yeah. I know how to do so because I, I, I've i been doing that for a long time. Okay, yeah. yeah. To be able to do that, yeah, you need good communication skills, social skills. Which can be, you can learn those things by communicating, socializing with people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yes, they're all learnable skills, okay? Yeah. Also, yeah, look good. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I look good, but I t at least try. And people appreciate that I, I at least try to look good, okay? Yeah. Smell nice, look nice, okay? And be happy. Yeah, happiness skills, very important. Yeah. Diet, exercise, dancing, martial arts, calisthenics, weightlifting, whatever. Okay, exercise. And uh, good rest. Good sleep, good breaks, good rest. And uh, because animals that te who tend to live very long time, like rockfish or elephants or whatever long living animals, like some t sea turtles, they have very slow uh, metabolic rate. So those are the animals who comes who comes slow, right? Yeah, slow metabolic rate, long to rest, plenty, right? Yeah, be happy. And post a career that would make you happy. Huh? It can be anything, okay? Any good legal job out there. Yeah. Success is, in human life, success is equal to happiness plus morality, right? Morality plus happiness. Ethics plus happiness, okay? Yeah. If you're happy, if you're eth ethical, that's all what success means in humanity, okay? It has nothing to do with money, power, fame, okay? If money, power, fame is what would make you happy, go for it, by all means. Yeah, be famous, wealthy, powerful, if that's what makes you happy. Oh, yeah, go for it. There's nothing wrong with pursuing those grand venues. I do. I want to be famous and powerful. When it comes to money, uh, I don't need that much money, okay? Yeah. But do I crave for power and fame? Yes, I do. And I pursue that. I'm running for elections and stuff. Right? Mm. How about martial arts? Do I practice martial arts is this, okay? Let's say, nowadays, people don't really make me angry at all, okay? Why? Because I'm nice to people, I became a mature person. Um, people really don't make me angry, okay? Yeah. But when they used to, when they did, yeah, what I do, I don't do anything. I come home and then I think about them and I practice martial arts. Punching and kicking in the air, imagining that person is there. No harm done, nothing immoral, nothing unethical, nothing illegal, okay? Just kicking and punching in the air, thinking about those individuals who are rude to me. Yeah. Nowadays, I don't even think about anybody when I practice martial arts. Why? This is not very nice to me. So, why? I guess, so why are people nice to me? Nowadays? Maybe people are not as stressed out as before, like during COVID-19, last year. I've seen some rude people, okay. But I, I guess nowadays, no longer COVID-19 stress, so I guess people are nicer now, in general. I think that's why. But I still practice martial arts. When I do, yeah, I th sometimes think about bears, okay.
But the thing is this, martial art weaponry, okay, yeah, it, it can't give you more strength, but at the, at the same time, it can't limit you, okay? Because if you do not have any weapon, you can do this open palm, right? 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 You can do open palm, right? <sighs> or you can have fist, right? All right? Yeah, I'm thinking about a bear, okay? <laughs> thinking about a bear, okay? Okay? And... Like, yeah, you can have... You can do a crane style, right? Or snake style. Or, if you do not have any weapons, okay? But if you have weapon, yeah, you have to grab it, so it's... It can't limit you. <laughs> List restricts your movement and positions and postures, okay, so having a weapon is good and bad, okay, so Yeah So To prevent anger, anger is like one of the negative copium, okay, so negative emotion or so and anger sometimes lead to violence or crimes, okay, and we don't want that in society. I think, let's say human killing, homicide, some of them are legal and some of them are illegal. In a war, uh, a soldier killing another enemy, enemy soldier, that's not a murder, that's a legal killing, lawful killing. Okay, yeah, but it is still killing of human life at war. It is still homicide. It's just legal homicide. Okay, so throughout the human history, okay, as a student of histor history, I have learned that homicide rate has been always decreasing. Less people are dying from at the hand hands of other people. Okay. There's less death penalty, less execution, and less wars, and okay, probably less murders too. Okay, why? Because this technological development, agricultural development, it also technological ease. Okay, I think people are happier now than before. With the plenty of food, plenty of entertainment. And life is easier. Machines, cars, airplanes, okay? Yeah. So as people become happier, they become less angry and they there decreases crimes, violent crimes. Because people are in general happier than before. Mm? Yeah. So people are happier now, they're less angry, so there's less violence and there's less crime than ever before, than ever before, okay? Human, humanity is making great progress, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm an optimist, okay, so I'm an optimist. Let's take five minutes break, please, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I took the trash out and now tumble dryer, so um, let me feel that clothing to see it's still wet or not. Okay, five minutes bread, please, thank you.
Yeah, I forgot to take my jacket with me, so. <laughs> I'll be right back.
So, uh, let's um, talk about domestic violence because uh, in Alaska, yeah, there's some problem of domestic violence. Okay, Alaska, yeah, I mean, not around me, of course, but I hear some news reports every now and then, some domestic violence issues. Okay. Um, Jesus said, Mr. Jesus, he didn't like, like di divorce. He was against divorce. Okay. Jesus said, uh, don't let nobody divorce except for the reason of adultery. That's what Jesus said. I'm kind of paraphrasing. Okay. I disagree with him. I disagree. Okay. In my opinion, people should get divorced when they when like domestic violence happens. Okay? They should divorce right away before that happens. Okay, domestic violence. They should divorce right away before domestic violence happens. Okay. So if a married couple if they are unhappy and it would result in the domestic violence, domestic violence is a crime. It's a criminal battery. People can go to jail for that. Back in the days, it, they didn't, but nowadays they do. Okay. I'm a lawyer, so I know this. Okay. Uh, back in the days, between married couples, there was no such a thing as rape. Nowadays, yeah, it is legally recognized. Rape between married couples, okay, yeah, and yeah, people go to jail for it, all right, so domestic violence, if married couple, or it could be boyfriend and girlfriend, okay, if do, that kind of domestic violence ha would happen, that means they're just not getting along, and they're not happy with each other, they should divorce or break up, right? it's that simple. Okay, yeah. Sometimes we hear a news, well, quite recently, several months ago, in San Jose, California. Actually, I was in San Jose, California, okay, for maybe a month. I joined the U.S. Army there, okay. There's this, well, gentleman well not gentle because he was a mass shooter okay he came to work with a gun and he started to shooting people his co-workers okay before that happens what he should have done is to quit the job and get another job if he's not happy with what he does if he does not like the people that he works with then he should have just quit, resign, and get apply and uh, get another job. Okay, that's what he should have done. Okay, yeah. it's common sense, right? Yeah. Most people do that when things are not working out, when they are not happy with their job, they quit and get another job, right? Most people do so, right? Or if they are not happy with their boyfriend, girlfriend, or their spouses, husbands and wives, they divorce and they break up. Most people do so, okay? But some others, maybe they are too afraid. Maybe they are kind of weak individuals. Maybe they don't have the courage to start a new job look for a new job, that uncertainty, or maybe being alone, being single for a while after divorce, after, after breakup. Maybe they are too weak. Some people are too weak to handle that kind of change. So maybe they, are, they just want to die. Suicide. Yeah, murder, suicide. Okay. I guess that's why they end up committing crimes. It's very suicidal, it's very self-destructive behavior, domestic violence or whatever violence.
So we are analyzing crimes because we want to solve this problem. We want to prevent crimes. Okay. Yeah, we are trying to understand. Okay. Yeah. So there's physical strength and mental strength, okay? One of the things I disagree with Bible is that they don't really emphasize physical strength, okay? They only emphasize mental strength, okay? St. Paul, he kind of like, well, kind of scornful and sarcastic about physical training, okay? St. Paul. He says something like, yeah, physical strength, eh, it doesn't quite help. I think that's what he said, okay? I'm paraphrasing it, okay? Paraphrasing him. So he didn't put regard highly about exercise. But Bible, yeah, they do emphasize diet, fasting, okay? Which I agree, okay? But they don't emphasize exercise. And I disagree, okay? Yeah. Maybe back in the days, it was not that necessary to physically exercise because a lot of physical labor, that's physical activity, right? So maybe it was not that necessary back then, huh? Because back in the days, yeah, labor is physical labor, so uh, they don't really need to go to the gym or run. <laughs> that's what they do at, in their line of work back in the days. But nowadays, technological ease, we became very sedentary. We just sit down, right? Yes, that's why exercise is necessary. Okay, okay. okay. Maybe it's some kind of anachronism that I criticize Bible people back in the days for not exercising, whatever. So physical strength, yeah, it's you walk, you uh, run, cardio, vascular, like swim, bicycling, or run, right, or fast walk, right. Yeah. Oh, weight training, calisthenics, pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, upside-down, shoulder push-ups, using body weight alone, right? Yeah. Or some weight training, right? Yeah. So that's what enhances your physical strengths. Mental strengths? How can you strengthen your mentality? To withstand mental pain how to strengthen enhance your mental uh, stamina metaphysical stamina okay if you like to yeah I'll give you five minutes okay otherwise I'll tell you okay only if you want to okay then we compare our answers okay? let's take five minutes break please thank you okay Strengths. How we do? How can we strengthen our mental strengths? Yeah. Metaphysical muscle. Okay, we we'll talk about that. Thank you.
So yeah, the human life is called anger management, okay, or elimination of anger. It's about happiness, okay? If people are happy, they're not angry, and they don't commit any violence, and there will be no more crimes. It's about happiness, okay? Yeah. Some people post their happiness by having pets like dogs, cats, birds, hamsters, whatever animals, turtles, or even snakes. Okay. Whatever, okay. Yeah, they have pets. That's great. It makes people happy. It prevents crimes, okay? So it prevents suicide too, okay? Some people post their happiness by hobbies like a uh, board game or video game or uh, ATV, all-terrain vehicle, uh, up here in Alaska, okay, or hunting, fishing, okay, that's great, yeah, happiness, yeah. How about me? I just run because I don't have money to buy all those fancy stuff, okay. I, I, I go to gym. Yeah, yeah, it does make me very happy, okay? Yeah, I love going to the gym. I went to gym yesterday and today, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It does make me happy tremendously. Going to gym, running outside. My gym membership is like $15 per month. Oh was every single penny, okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Some people, you know, obtain their happiness in gardening, growing all their own vegetables, plants, flowers, or cooking. That's great. So happy nicks, okay, study of happiness, all right, uh, in a lawful, legal, moral, ethical way, okay, yeah. Some play, some people play card games, board games, it's so cool, okay. How about Bitcoin, stock investment? Yeah, Bitcoin, yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's any merit to it, but it's kind of, maybe it's better than gambling, okay. I mean, to gamble, well, you have to go to a gambling place and in gambling places sometimes they serve alcohol and you, you don't know drink and drive because you have, after gambling you have to drive back home right yeah so but bitcoin yeah you can tra invest in bitcoin uh it's kind of like gambling okay i don't think bitcoin has that much merit per se okay so, but it's, it's legal gambling and uh, you don't have to drive to a gambling place so maybe it's Better than traditional slot machine kind of gambling, okay? Uh, uh. For entertainment sake, right? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Uh. Okay, so you know through that, right? Okay, what else? Uh, too cute to persecute. Too cute to persecute. Yeah, we came up with this phrase like several months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of guy, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of like a baby. I need attention from people, attention, affection, caring, loving. I crave for that, okay? So, from my family members, my friends, okay? Yeah, I'm like a baby. Attention sicko, okay? <laughs> At my age of 43 years old, okay, I'm still an attention sicko, like a baby. I have met many mentors in my life, 
many of them I still keep in touch with. Yeah. To them, I regard them as uh, my parents, okay? I, I have my biological parents in South South Korea, okay? I talk to them all the time, okay? But beside them, okay, I have many mentors, my former bosses, former teachers, professors, okay? Yeah. So, my co former colleagues, okay? I'm like a baby, okay? I need attention, okay? So, attention seeker. That's why I'm running for U.S. Senate, U.S. Senate from Alaska to get more attention. Okay. I'm a baby. I'm like, ah, I want to be famous so that I get people's attention. I'm just a baby. I I'm a baby. Right. So happy July Fourth coming. Okay, yeah. Happy birthday, America. Okay, yeah. I bet I'll be out there marching with this. Uh, Weird contraption, kind of homemade campaign sign. I the campaign board itself was professionally printed, so it, it looks great. Okay, so but the frame, yeah, I made it by myself. Of course, the sign is store professionals. They designed it for me. Okay, because they're professionals. Okay, I learned from them carpentry. Okay, and I implemented their design. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And I added my some of my own ideas too. Okay, so yeah, so it's like it be pretty weird, okay? Me wearing campaign sign behind my back or on my shoulder, okay. And they say it's gonna rain weather forecast this Sunday. July 4th, 2021, okay. So maybe I, I will have Alaskan flag in one hand, umbrella on the other hand, poncho, rain gear, okay. If it rains, there will not be many people on the street. July 4th parade in Wasilla, Alaska, okay. That's fine. Right. Just for the record, okay, yeah. I did campaign for U.S. senatorial election from Alaska, year 2021, and next year too, 2022. Okay. Just for the record. Yeah. I'll take some selfies. Mm -hmm. What else? What's in the dinner menu? Yeah, pork chop, right? Yeah, because I bought two. I ate one two days ago. It was good, all right, yeah. I have another one in the refrigerator. I microwave it. I put some water in there, okay, and discard it. Pack barbecue sauce package because barbecue sauce, it, it's just too sweet, all right? I add all the sugar, okay, yeah. So I discard the barbecue sauce package and just put some water in there and the microwave it. Just pork chop, okay. So that's what I'm gonna have, you know. Mm -hmm. It was good, yeah. Two days ago, two nights ago. Yeah. So we'll take five minutes break, please, okay, and then, um, we we'll talk about pebble. Yeah. Uh, some controversial topic. Nowadays. The competition bosses fishing industry and pebble mine in Bristol Bay. Uh, let's talk about that. <clears throat> okay. No, let me write it down before I forget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. 
Uh, let me discard of some of the spell cans because uh, when I drink beer, I don't drink beer too much. I just sip a couple of times and then I just let it sit here. So, okay, let me dump this out.
Okay, so let's talk about happiness a little bit more. Education, of how to be happy. So it's more than knowledge, right? It's like uh, actually my teachers spending time with me on one-on-one -on -one basis when I was struggling with this mathematics problem. When I was taking acting class, my acting coach, teacher in acting class, spending time with us one-on-one -on -one basis to uh, instruct us, inspire us how to do this, do this gestures, crafts, facial expression and um, movement, spacing, interacting with the props in a monologue. Okay, and my parents spending time with me, like painting a picture or going to hiking and fishing, actually one-on-one -on -one interaction, that kind of education. Okay, it's more than just looking up, looking something up in the internet and learning the knowledge. It's more than that. Person to person, in person, human interaction. Okay, yeah. So when I was in the U.S. Army, okay, we practiced running. Okay, so in Fort Hood, Texas, uh, I was in the U.S. Army between 2009 and 2013, okay. So 2009, I was in the Georgia, Fort Benning, Fort Gordon, 2000, that's 2009 and 2010, okay, one year, about. Uh, 2010 to 2011, Fort Hood, Texas, and 2011 to 2012, uh, Afghanistan. And 2012 to 2013, final year, for, back in Fort Hood, Texas, okay? So in Fort Hood, Texas, it's a big base. I belong to one of the biggest division, 1st Cavalry, with the biggest army patch, with this kind of upside-down triangle, yellow, and this uh, diagonal black line and horse, okay? Back in the days, yeah, cavalry, it means like horse unit, okay? Yeah. kind of like a scout not spy but scout okay cavalry horse ridden cavalry unit okay yeah to investigate the enemy territory okay so that's what cavalry means okay yeah so traditionally it was like that okay so uh and 4th Cavalry in Fort Hood, Texas, okay, it's such a big unit. How many people in, uh, were there? Soldiers, officers, NCOs, sergeants in 4th Cavalry? Let's try to calculate, okay, so... It's a big unit, okay, one of the biggest, possibly the biggest unit in the world, okay, I, I don't know, but it was big. I was in avionics platoon, like basically electrician for helicopters. What kind of helicopters? Yeah, Black Hawk, Chinook, Apache. Okay. Mostly, okay? Huey or what the, the, or the Anaconda or what is the Commando or whatever. Rarely, okay? Anyway, mostly Black Hawks, okay? Yeah. Chinook, Apache. Whatever, so avionics, okay, the electric, electrician for helicopters, that was my job, okay. And avionics platoon, how many people? Soldiers, officers, sergeants? About 30. Alright. And we belong to next unit, Bravo Company. How many people are in the Bravo Company? So there's avionics platoon and some other platoons, so... Let's say there are, there are five platoons, six, seven. So Bravo Company, about 200 people. Active duty people, including officers, sergeants, junior enlisted, people like me, roles and ranks. I was very bottom. E4 specialist, okay. Yeah, junior enlisted. So yeah, Bravo Company, about 200 people, okay? Next level, Battalion. How many people are in one Battalion? About a thousand. Okay. Next level, above Battalion, Brigade. Okay? Maybe a couple of thousand, okay? Next level, 
division. About 10,000 people. Okay. Fourth Cavalry Division, there's this other brigades. I would belong to Air Cab, Air Cavalry. Okay. We all we all deal with helicopters. Okay. But there are other brigades. There's infantry brigade too in Fourth Cavalry. Okay. It's a big division. Okay. And some others deal with like chemical warfare, or nuclear warfare, okay. It, it was a big division that includes pretty much everybody, okay. Mm -hmm. Like 10,000 people, I think. That would be my guess. At least some several thousand, okay. So, PT, physical training, right? In this army tradition, we just love running, okay? Or we are supposed to love running. And I did, yeah. Before I joined the US Army, yeah, I always ran. When I was in South South Korea or in America, I always, always ran, okay? Running is fun, okay? But US Army run, that's mostly in the... Pro you have six inches all around, okay? It's like a, kind of like four columns and 10 ranks, like rectangular fashion, we run in a formation, okay, so left, right, left, left, right, so that we don't step on each other, okay, army cadence, okay, left, right, left, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, okay. <sighs> Fun, but many times stressful, because sometimes we step on each other's toes. That's why we have to this, uh, sing cadence as we run. Left, 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 right, okay. Yeah. Six inches all around, okay. It was fun. Yeah. Sometimes stressful too. And so, Monday to Friday, for four years, we did running, okay. Sometimes, platoon level. 30 soldiers, okay? Sometimes company level, like 100 people. Sometimes battalion run, like, like 500 people. Okay. Not all in one rectangle, no, broken down by companies, okay? <laughs> Alpha company, Bravo company, Charlie company, Delta company, Echo company, okay? One battalion, just company by company, okay? Yeah. Sometimes we would have brigade run, maybe like once a quarter. Okay. Once a year, or more often than that, we would have division run. Okay, this about 10,000 people, army, active duty, soldiers, sergeants, officers. Okay, we would run all together. Okay, it was spectacular. Okay. Like once a year or twice a year, okay, we'll do that, okay. Have you seen those documentaries where in Antarctica, this big herd of penguins, they always find their own babies, own mates, right? It was kind of like that, okay. Yeah, the emperor penguins, whatever, okay. They always find their babies, their mates, their spouses in this penguin colony in Antarctica, right? Yeah. It was kind of like that. Okay, so when we have division run, first cavalry division run, like once or twice a year, okay? We would always find our spot. Huh? How? Because they tell us, okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, go there, okay, in this big field in Fargo, Texas, okay, yeah, go there, okay, like, there's the front of the building, there's a the podium, okay, like, uh, somewhere left of that, okay, kind of one tenth from the far left, whatever, okay, yeah, so we'll find each other, okay, so, and, yeah, it was fun. Good old army days, right? Yeah.
then we will start running one company by one company, one sojo by one sojo. Okay, it was spectacular. Good old army days. Okay, sometimes I do miss those days. But nowadays I'm 43 years old. Okay, I mean in the U.S. Army there are people in their 50s and 60s. Okay, but me, I'm not very physically strong. All right, I'm physically kind of average. I'm not that strong. I'm not that weak. Okay. I do run Monday to Friday, all right? But in my own pace though, okay? in the US Army, it's a group run. You run in formation. You cannot run too fast. You cannot run too slow. You have to run in the Army pace. And I cannot catch up with that anymore. Okay. Because to me, that's too fast. I run very slowly these days. In my own pace, okay. Yeah, I do push ups and sit ups, yeah. In my own pace, okay. If I take army PT test, physical training test, PT, will I pass it? I don't know. But I do push ups and sit ups and running in my own pace, though, okay. Slowly. Because I'm trained to do so. Yeah. Because my sergeants, officers, my colleagues, they spend time with me doing that stuff for four years. Monday to Friday. Okay. Yeah. Good education. Right? I still retain that second nature, yeah, push up, sit up, pull up, running, the kind of physical training. I still do it. Although I'm not in the U.S. Army anymore. Yeah, yeah second nature. Education. Okay, yeah. Copium channel transcription. It's like DNA transcription in biology. Molecular biology, okay. Yeah, copium channel transcription. It's just, you know, our teachers, superiors, spending time with us to show how it is done. With running, push up, sit up or business transaction, whatever, okay? Or mathematics, foreign languages. Yeah, they spend time with us in person. And we learn the way, correct way to do it. Education. It's more than just looking something up in the internet, okay? Or YouTube, okay? so. That's very important, okay? Education. Yeah. In person education, okay? Yeah, yeah. But once you learned it, you don't have to go back to school. Just looking something up in the internet, Wikipedia, or YouTube, or some other web pages, that's good, actually good enough. Why? Because you learned how to study, you learned how to learn, okay? Now you are independent student, independent learner. You can learn all those things for free in the internet. Yeah, Russian. I have never learned Russian in school, but I'm studying it on my own. And uh, yeah, I'm learning it. Yeah, it's working. Okay. In the internet or CD when I drive, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I did learn other foreign languages in school, like English, French, some German. Those are some foreign languages I learned in school. Yeah. Spanish, I learned it on my own. Books, internet, some other languages like Russian, I'm still learning, and Portuguese. Just a little bit of Greek, Italian, just a little bit. Okay, so. I mean, Chinese, yeah, I, I, we, we, we had to learn as a, I grew up in South South Korea, okay, yeah, we had to learn Chinese characters, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's take five minutes break, please, okay? All right. Hmm? 
Okay. Thank you. We're talking about education, right? Yeah. Hmm.
Okay. Yeah, sorry I forgot, but I just remembered uh, the question we asked. Okay, let's answer it. Okay, how do we? How can we mentally strengthen our mentality, metaphysical muscle? Okay, yeah, it's ethics, morality, religion. Okay, doing the right thing. Okay, yeah, mental pain and suffering. Okay, forgive and forget. Turn the right cheek, left cheek. Charity, forgiveness. It's all about ethics, morality, religion, okay, yeah. That's how we can strengthen our patience, tolerance, okay, there's no other way, okay. Yeah. It's religion. Yeah. Maybe some philosophy too, okay, yeah. But Ethics, morality, yeah, it revolves around religion, okay? That's what religion is very good at. Morality, ethics, it's religion, okay? Christianity, Islam, uh, Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism, Hinduism, okay? Because religion, good traditional religions, they're all about ethics and morality. Okay? It's about love, forgiveness, virtue, charity. Yeah, hard work, okay. Self humility, self mortification, fasting. It's that's mental strength, okay. Yeah, yeah, fasting, okay. Yeah, we suffer from hunger, right? Yeah, so we are all abstinence, forbearance, okay. Yeah. To resist animalistic desire when it comes to food or money, sometimes power, fame, sometimes some reproductive kind of male female kind of stuff, or but in humanology, sometimes sometimes it involves like ideological stuff, ideological temptations, mainstream. Dominant ideology, resisting that stuff. Okay, that's kind of brand new emphasis in this new ethics morality that we call humanology. Okay, yeah, we are vanguards of brand new ethics. We are exploring, pioneering next generation's morality. Okay, welcome to humanology. Okay, that's one of my important things that we do here. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ideological wind force, right? Yeah, we want to resist that. All right, so, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Now what? Yeah, so tomorrow's Friday, huh? Yeah, Friday and I like honky. <laughs> we had participants like once, okay. The I mean the Zoom meeting possible. Friday and I honkily every Friday, 6 p.m. Alaska time, okay. Yeah, it's Zoom meeting and also it's uh, Facebook Live recorded and later on published in uh, YouTube, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It happen tomorrow. So episode four, they were kind and generous participants, okay, but will it ever happen again in this Friday night, like honkily? Uh, this is humanoid series, okay, yeah, this is not a live event, but humanoid, I mean, series is tape recorded and then published on YouTube, okay, humanoid series channel, okay. But uh, when it comes Friday and I like Honky Lee, it's live event. Okay, it's recorded and uh, broadcast live in Facebook and also it's Zoom meeting. 
Okay, open to everybody in the world. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what was going to happen tomorrow. Okay, another thing I forgot to talk about. Yeah, pebble and fish. Okay, pebble versus fish. So some people oppose pebble mine. In uh, that's like Brist Bristol Bay. There's 500 billion worth of gold, copper, and molybdenum. Okay, so and Bristol Bay. Some say is the biggest salmon population area. Okay, yeah. Okay. So f mining industry and fishing industry, they're kind of competing. Okay. Some environmentalists say, Oh, if there's pebble mine, all these fish will die. I have to disagree. Because people who say that, they're not quite thinking deeply, logically, okay? I have some mathematical background, okay? So I took some logic classes as a computer science major back in medicine and kind of some days, okay? Okay. Let's say, hypothetically, we build pebble mine to excavate gold, copper, and molybdenum. Okay? It takes some waste water that go down the stream. Maybe some salmon will die in Bristol Bay. Okay? Maybe. And the uh, Bristol Bay fishing industry, their reputation might suffer from that. I understand, right? Yeah. So maybe people will stop buying, purchasing salmons that were caught in Bristol Bay because maybe this Bristol Bay salmon will absorb this water polluted by gold, copper, and molybdenum. Okay? So that's the fishing industry's concern. But, when it comes to salmon population in Bristol Bay, let's think logically, not emotionally, but rationally, logically, okay? If pebble mine is built in Bristol Bay to excavate gold, copper, and molybdenum, $500 billion worth, okay? Will there be more salmon population or less salmon population? My hypothesis, I think there will be more salmon. How? I tell you in five minutes. Okay, so it's logical deduction. Okay, yeah, because I'm trading logic. Okay, yeah. it's a computer science major back in the days. Okay, yeah, classical, you know, Aristotelian logic. Like, uh, what's the what's the terminology of that? Three step, right? I mean, they joke about it, right? Every human being dies, and Socrates is a human being, so Socrates dies, okay? What's that terminology? It's kind of three step logic. Syllogism, right? Yeah, syllogism. Ancient Greek, Aristotelian. Socratesian, Platonian, yes, yeah, syllogism, ancient Greek, okay, but that's like what, 500 BC, okay, later on, okay, early 1900s or late 1800s, modern development of fourth order logic, they kind of integrated this set theory, propositional logic, okay, 
it's there are some later developments. I mean, I, I did learn that stuff. Okay. Deduction. Okay. Yeah. When I was in high school in South South Korea and also in America, okay, as a computer science major. Yeah, so I learned some more about logic, Western logic. Okay, which is really cool. Okay. Yeah. So if Pebble Mine in Bristol Bay gets developed to excavate gold, copper, maritano. Yeah, there is some wastewater that flow down the stream. And salmon going upstream in the river streams, they sallow this water, pollute this water with gold, copper, molybdenum, dirt, mud. Maybe some of them will die. Okay? So the reputation of this pebble mine. Dirt flowing down the stream and salmon, they eat them and they die. If they survive, they get polluted, which is heavy metal, highly toxic to human beings. Gold, copper, molybdenum in salmon, fish body. I don't think anybody would want to eat that. So yeah, Bristol Bay fishing industry may suffer from that ill reputation after pebble mine is built. That's why they oppose it. Okay? Now, let's turn to environmentalists, animal rights activists, conservationists, naturalists. My question to them is this. If pebble mine is built in Bristol Bay, Alaska, America, will there be more salmon population or less salmon population? If I have to bet, I, th I bet there will be more salmon population. Why? I tell you, logical deduction in five minutes. I might be wrong, okay? Yeah. But if you want to take a guess of that logic, yeah, feel free to guess, okay? If you want to. Otherwise, I'll just tell you in five minutes, okay? It's not that difficult of a logical jump. There's some a couple of logical steps, okay, but not that many steps, okay. Maybe you already know my thought process. Well, kudos to you. You are a very smart person, okay. When it comes to logic, okay, maybe you are smart, smarter than me in other areas in the world, but when it comes to logic, if you guessed, you are logically smart. Otherwise, you're probably smarter than me in other areas, maybe some foreign languages or literature or musical instruments or fine arts. Okay, yeah. So, let's take five minutes back, please. Okay, so, I have some more questions. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Okay, so, you know, I'm kind of amateur mathematician, amateur lo logician, and also pro-pebble, pro-development, kind of conservative in that. 
I mean, not conservative, maybe, but Republican kind of thinking, pro-development, pro-industry, okay? If it's conservatism, it can mean many different things, okay? Environmental conservatism or is it conservatism about industry, whatever, okay? Pro I'm pro-development, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Create jobs, make money. And then help out poor people. In that sense, I'm very liberal too. Okay, so what the logical reasoning here? This line of logic, theoretically. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of lazy. And I, I back in the days when I saw South Korea, there's this Korean tra translation of this French entomologist, the studio insects. Yeah, Jean Angé. Faber, okay, John Henry Faber, okay, so French entomologist. I read his biography, translated in, in Korean, okay, because I love insects, okay. So he had this mathematics teacher, and he said to young Faber, Faber, uh, yeah, algebra is a lazy man's mathematics, okay. He just sit there and mess with numbers. Algebra is very lazy man's mathematics, okay, so Yeah, I'm kind of like that, I'm kind of lazy, okay I just sit here by myself and fantasize about things like Pebble Mine, okay So Pebble Partnership, okay, they may think I'm too extreme pro Pebble Maybe they would disown me, okay, I'm okay with that, okay Yeah, let them do, prof they're professional business people, scientists, engineers, let them do their own things, okay yeah, I'm just, you know, I think Pebble Mine development is a good idea. So I'm pro Pebble activist, but if they disown me, Pebble Mine, Pebble partnership, if they disown me, can't distance me because I'm too much far right, far Republican, the pro Pebble law, I might hurt the cause because I'm too extreme pro Pebble. Maybe they think. I mean, I'm not too popular, maybe I'm anti-popular, I'm notorious pro popular. So maybe they disown me, distance from me, pair partnership, I'm okay with that, okay? Yeah, I still think it's a good idea to develop pair mine, okay? If I hurt the pair mine project, I apologize, okay? I did not intend to. But I'm an academician, private academic, secular scholar, I'm not your logician, I'm not your mathematician, so I have to do this. Okay. If Pebble Partnership disown me or distance me because I'm too far right pro Pebble, I'm okay with that. Okay, let them do their own things, let them distance me, disown me, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, but God bless you still. Okay. I think it's a good idea to do Pebble. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's say they are hypothetically there's pebble mine and some gold, copper, molybdenum, this wastewater get into the stream and poison salmon, heavy metal, toxic to human beings, unfit for human consumption. Then Brusto Bay salmon fishermen will suffer. Because nobody will buy salmon caught in Bristol Bay. Okay. So, Bristol Bay salmon fishermen will stop fishing salmon because no one will buy it, nobody gonna eat it. Salmon caught in Bristol Bay. Okay. Then what next? All the salmons that used to be caught by human beings, the fishermen in Bristol Bay, they go upstream. Okay. Maybe some of them will die from poisoning from this gold, copper, molybdenum, waste water from pebble mine. Okay. So maybe some will die. Okay. 
but others will survive. Okay, because there's no more fishermen in Bristol Bay. Okay, humans are the number one killers of salmon. We don't just catch salmon; we eat its caviar too. Salmon caviar. Have I ever eaten salmon caviar in my life? Maybe once or twice. Okay. Yeah. Between your teeth, this salmon egg pops between your teeth. Okay. Fish egg. Female salmon. How many salmon eggs are there? Maybe 1,000. Potentially, it could have been baby salmon. But we eat those caviar and they taste really good. Not just salmon caviar, salmon eggs. Well, salmon eggs, maybe I had once or twice in my life. Okay. But there are some other smaller fish species, caviar eggs in South Korea. Okay. It's called Myeongnanjot and it's great. It's smaller species and there's no environmental concern about that. No extinction, no, no. It's a very common, smaller fish, okay. Myeongnanjot, okay, it's this uh, pickled fish eggs. It's not salmon, it's smaller fish, okay. It's a lot more common fish, so there's no concern about extinction at all, okay. Myeongnanjot, okay. Mm -hmm. Fish eggs, okay. Yeah, just like we harvest chicken eggs, okay. Have I have ever had ostrich egg? Big ostrich egg from Australia? Yeah. I think I had it like once. Big ostrich egg, okay. Imported to South South Korea. Okay. I had I think I had it once. It's a big meal. But it tastes just like chicken egg, okay? It's just bigger. Okay. Yeah, eggs, okay. Yeah. So if parallel, hypothetically parallel mine is built, okay, and the um, reputational damage to Bristol Bay's fishing industry, okay, yeah, this gold, copper, molybdenum, mud, heavy metal, mining, pebble mine, okay, going to the stream and some salmon swimming upstream, okay, they swallow those dirty, heavy metallic water, they got polluted. Unfit for human consumption of Bristol Bay salmon. Okay, if that happens, hypothetically, yeah, there will be no more fishing industry in Bristol Bay. Okay, no single human being will catch fish in Bristol Bay salmon. So, will there be more salmon? Surviving and flowing upstream in Bristol Bay and have full birth of these baby salmon. Yeah. What will environmentalists say? Yeah, they'll be very happy to see that. Why? Because there is, there will be like 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times, million times more salmon in Bristol Bay. Why? Because nobody's fishing Bristol Bay fish. After pebble mines built. There will be millions of times of more salmon going upstream with their full caviar and they will go upstream the Bristol Bay and spawn and there will be more, one million times more Bristol Bay salmon. Why? Because no human beings will be fishing there. Okay. Human beings, they are the number one killers of salmon. If nobody eats salmon, nobody fish salmon, there will be millions of more salmon, million times in Bristol Bay, after pearl mine is built. It will please environmentalists, animal rights activists, conservationists, if pearl mine is built. Okay, because there will be millions of times of more salmon in live salmon in Bristol Bay. Because no human beings will buy and eat salmon caught in Bristol Bay. Okay, so you will please environmentalists if pebble mine is built in Bristol Bay.
Okay. Okay. How about Bristol Bay fishermen who lost their jobs? No problem. They can get make even more money working for pebble mine. We have salmon. We have gold. Copper, maritanum in pebble mine in Bristol Bay. Salmon, gold, copper, maritanum. What makes more money? If they are so passionate about salmon fishing, they can go somewhere else in Alaska where there's no pebble mine. But if they want to make more money, salmon versus gold, copper, maritanum, they can switch, switch over and get a job in this pebble mine and make more money if that's what they want. But if they're still so passionate about salmon fishing, they can go somewhere else. Why? Because Alaska is big. There are plenty of other places. There are a lot of salmons. Okay? It's a win-win situation. Okay? Yeah. So then why should we recommend four more Bristol Bay salmon fishermen to switch over to become a gold miner in pebbles, pebble mine. Well, they don't have to, okay? But if we develop pebble mine, it's $500 billion worth of gold, copper, and maritanum. Okay? If we make them money, we can save a lot of Alaskan lives. Some social programs. Okay, we we'll educate criminals, homeless people, and people who commit domestic violence. Social programs to educate them and to help our poor people. Five hundred billion dollars from Pebble Mine, we can do a lot of good things to make Alaskan lives better and save poor people in Alaska and eliminate crimes, to educate criminals, to educate drug addicts, yeah, to educate and rehabilitate criminals, homeless people, and help our poor people, social programs, okay? I think saving human lives is better than saving salmon's life. But when pebble is built, we we'll save salmon's, I just told you, right? There will be no more salmon fishing in Bristol Bay. There will be more salmon. If you care about salmon's lives. At the same time, pale mine is built, yeah, we'll save human lives too. I think that's a lot more important than saving some salmon fish's lives, okay? We'll save them both. It's a win-win situation. If you care about salmon, if you care about human beings' lives in Alaska, we'll save them both by building pale mine, okay? Welcome to human analogy, okay? Anything goes. Okay, some logical deduction, some lawyer skill, persuasion, conv you know, convincing, yeah, persuading people, okay? Yeah, logical deduction, yeah, I'm trained to do this stuff. I'm trained as a lawyer. I went to law school. I'm trained as a mathematician, logician, because I studied those stuff, okay? In Korea, Madison, Wisconsin. Ithaca, New York, Cornell, and Ann Arbor, Michigan, whatever other places. Okay, so. Okay. Yeah. We'll take five minutes break, please. Okay, so. Yeah. yeah. If I offended anybody, I'm sorry. I apologize, okay.
Okay. All right. Five minutes, Chris. Thank you. All right.
Okay. So, how much time do we have? We have like 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. Okay. Yeah, I went to work today. I got my job done. Okay, so. After that, I come home, I drink. Okay, because. I, like, if you're a man, woman, working, or if you're a stay, stay home mom, stay home dad, it's all stressful. Okay, working hours. After that, I drink, okay? And it works every single time, okay? Yeah. <sighs> we as adults, we have to work, right? Yeah, we suffer from all this aging, pain and suffering, and work stress, okay? Yeah, so that's why I drink, to forget about it all, to relax. Right. Look at me, I'm healthy. I smoke cigarettes, I drink alcohol, so what? I'm healthy. Okay, so. Now, we have 30 minutes left. Okay, let's make best use of it. Okay, so when President Trump was the president, like, a couple of years ago, he appreciated Iran. Okay, yeah. I guess he learned some history, okay? Persia, the descendants of Persian Empire. Yeah, maybe he's, he, yeah, Mr. Trump, yeah, he got some goods, okay? So he respected this Persian politics, Persian politician being very smart, okay? But he said, oh, I'm President Trump of the United States. When I'm the president, there will be no, more, no nuclear weapon in Iran. Because they may attack Israel with their nuclear weapon, Iran. That's what he said. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, Israel? Yeah, I will move uh, US emb embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. <sighs> I don't like that, okay. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to move US embassy from Tel Aviv or wherever to Israel to Jerusalem, okay. To me, uh, they might offend some other people, okay. Jerusalem, that's very historic Israelite place, okay, very significant in Judaism and Christianity, okay, so to move U.S. embassies from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, I don't think it's a good idea, okay, so it's, 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 it's egotism, American nationalism, okay? I am not that at all. I respect foreign countries, their tradition. I have more respect to foreign countries than Mr. Trump. Okay? I would have never moved U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. No. You could offend people, too many people. Okay? So unnecessary. Let me get that bug. That what the squiggly insect over there? Okay, on my campaign sign. Okay, let me let me get that bug. Okay. I think it's some kind of ant. Whatever. So, Iran, okay, what would I say about Iran if I was the President of the United States today? Yeah, I will hire some Persian linguists who can also speak English, okay? I would learn Iranian language, Persian, okay? Yeah, Farsi, okay? I did study some, okay, back in the days, okay? Yeah. I, they write in Arabic language, in Arabic, but their vocabulary is more Western, Indo-European, okay. So it's not the same as Arabic vocabulary, okay, but they use Arabic alphabet. I know this because I did study some Persian and Arabic, and yeah, Persian, Farsi, and some 
Ah, uh, just a little bit of Urdu and that's more like uh, Pakistan, halfway between Afghanistan and India. Some Hindi, uh, Sanskrit. Uh, no, I did not learn their language very well, but uh, yeah, some Arabic language like uh, Dari in Afghanistan or the Pashto, just a little bit, okay. Arabic, yeah, I, I just studied some Arabic, okay, so just a little bit of Dari, Pashto, just a little bit, and like uh, some Persian, just a little bit, okay, yeah, but I did study Arabic, okay, yeah. So if I was the president of the United States today, yeah, I would hire some Persian linguists who can speak Persian, Iranian language, and English, okay, and to learn how to say hello, how to say hello, thank you, goodbye, you're welcome, hi, how are you, to learn those languages, Iranian language, before I call to Iranian President, Prime Minister, okay. But after, yeah, I say hello, thank you, okay, in Iranian, Persian language, after I learned that, okay. After that, if it language translation, translation, I just speak in English and language translator will translate what I say in English, okay, to Iranian Prime Minister. Zoom meeting or Skype meeting or telephone call, phone call, okay. Whatever I say. Oh, I love Iranian, Persian, history, Mesopotamia, Middle East. I love Islam, okay. Great religion, okay. And also King Cyrus, Emperor Cyrus, who loved Jews. Emperor Cyrus, they, he freed Jews and sent them back to Israel. Okay. Yeah, 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 Iranians, that's like descendants of Persian em Empire, they spent all the way, the kind of connection between East and West, okay, the Middle East, all the way to Egypt, to uh, India, okay, Persian Empire, Emperor Cyrus. I read his biography. I studied Emperor Cyrus, not just in Bible, some, but some other venues like Wikipedia, okay. Some other web pages. I remember Emperor Cyrus, when he was conquering all these regions, he was very respectful to other countries' customs. Emperor Cyrus, Persian Empire. What year was that? Over 500 BC, I think. Okay. Over 500 BC, well, maybe before that, okay. Yeah, so, way before time of Jesus Christ, okay. Maybe 700 BC, 500 BC, maybe 300 BC, somewhere around there, okay. Emperor Cyrus, or Persian Empire, okay. Yeah. So we, when he conquered all these kingdoms, Persian kingdom, okay, conquered other countries, he was very respectful to those conquered countries' customs and cultures. He did not try to change them. He wanted to preserve them. Okay, he took pity on Israelites before Persian Empire of Emperor Cyrus. He was Babylonian. Like Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian emperor, this translocation, this diaspora of Jews to from Israel to Babylonia, okay, like Prophet Daniel, Ezekiel, whoever, okay. But Emperor Cyrus of Iran, the descent, the ancestors of Iran, today's Iran. Persian Empire. He took pity on Israelites and sent them back to Israel. All right, yeah. Emperor Cyrus. Cheers to him. Okay. Benign emperor, very benevolent, charitable, good philosopher king, ethical 
moralistic king, Emperor Cyrus. I have huge admiration, okay? And that's not the only story about Emperor Cyrus that I admire about. I know some more about Emperor Cyrus of Persian Empire, ancestor of, po of Iran. Okay. Not very well known story, but I'm a good student of history. So I know this very obscure story. I do. And I remember. Yeah, I don't smoke marijuana. Okay. I just drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes. Okay. I have good memory, okay. But marijuana, maybe not, it's not too bad, okay. Yeah. Because Many of my American friends who smoke marijuana, they remember who I am. <laughs> maybe, maybe it doesn't hurt memory very much, okay? But my friends in America who smoke marijuana, they remember who I am, okay? They remember I'm their friend, okay? Whatever. Just cracking some American jokes, okay? Okay, so, from what I recall, Emperor Cyrus, okay? Let, let's take five minutes break. Okay. Then I, we'll continue the story. Okay? We'll take five minutes break, please. I saw for rest. We are do the same thing when I'm talking to Iranian Prime Minister. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's busy, so maybe... Uh... But if I'm talking to Iranian President, okay, maybe I'll let him talk. So that I can have some vocal rest. Uh, but it'd be very nice uh, if I become president of the United States, as opposed to Obama, Trump, Biden, all this video call. <sighs> Incapable people, okay. So I keep on running for. Political offices, okay. Five minutes, Chris. Thank you. What do they know, right? Yeah.
Yeah, so we are doing this political fantasy here, okay? That's what I do. I fantasize about politics, about romance. Not very successful so far, but whatever, who knows? So let's continue with this political fantasy, okay? Me being the president of the United States and uh, having some Zoom meeting or Skype meeting or teleconference with Iranian Prime Minister, President, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I admire Islam, Prophet Muhammad Allah, okay? I would greatly admire your, your ancestor, okay? Emperor Cyrus, okay? He was very tolerant. Tolerant, okay? Charitable, right? Yeah. So, Mr. Prime Minister, okay, this is one obscure story about that I learned some obscure websites. I think it was Wikipedia, okay. Emperor Cyrus, he had his generals, like 500 BC, okay, 2500 years ago, Emperor Cyrus. He had many generals. When he, as he conquered all these different parts of the world, the biggest empire in human history, presumably. Okay. Yeah. So his army, this Persian Empire army generals, captured the most beautiful ladies in the world. And they reported back to Emperor Cyrus. And this army, Persian army generals would say, Oh, your highness, Emperor Cyrus, we captured this female, young, beautiful, no, without any tattoos or piercings. I mean, she's like, 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 she's not like American girl, like heavily tattooed and pierced or marijuana. Or, Obese. No, she's young, slender, and no tattoo, no piercing, no marijuana, no drug addiction. A virgin, okay, maybe she's like 21 years old, somewhere in the Middle East. But we saw her, and she's beautiful, no tattoos, no piercings, no marijuana, no drug addiction, and no obesity, like today's American girls typically are, right? But it's a purely beautiful, young, slender, virgin, no tattoos, no piercings, okay? And we saw her and we find her very beautiful, so maybe she can be your next wife. Would you see her? And Emperor Cyrus said no. That's Emperor Cyrus. 500 BC, about, okay. 200, 2,500 years ago, Emperor Cyrus, he's kind of like celibatic a little bit, okay. He wanted to resist this carnal desire. He was a man, okay. And he was a good man and strong man, so he said something like, No! No, 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 don't bring her to me, okay? Let her go, okay? Let her... I'm kind of paraphrasing, adding my own stuff. We are writing a fiction, it's a novel, movie, short film, theatrical production, okay? No, let her go home, okay? Send her back to her family, okay? I do not want to see her, because if I do see her, I might get tempted, but I have to manage it, manage this empire, Persian empire, okay, I have to take care of business, economics, politics, business, okay, I'm busy, okay, Be but if I see her, you said she's a very beautiful young lady, okay, spotless, so perfect in figure and complexion, beautiful face, long hair, very feminine, no LGBT influence, she's like, Purely female, natural female, okay. But if I see her, I might get tempted. 
So I will, I do not want to see her, okay, because I do not want to get distracted. I do not want to be tempted, okay, because I have this Persian empire to take care of all these people. I think he was a very good leader, Emperor Cyrus. Very good leader and strongly disciplined individual. I admire that gentleman, Emperor Cyrus. Cheers. He resists the temptation, okay, so. Not many men in power can do that. Yeah, you see President Trump, President Bill Clinton, okay. Giving it to Kennedy, oh, J President JFK, John F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, okay. Giving it to this kind of desire as a man. Wanting this young, Ladies, right? Yeah. But Emperor Cyrus, 2,500 years ago, he resisted that temptation. I admire that. That's what I'll say to Prime Minister of Iran, the descendant of Emperor Cyrus from. 2,500 years ago. That's what I would mention. Okay? Okay, sin, caught. Okay, yeah. That's our acting. Alright. Yeah, Iran, okay. Okay, resume. Action, okay. Yeah, Mr. Prime Minister, okay. Yeah, Iran, yeah, defense of nuclear weapon. As the president of the United States, okay, I'm not gonna mess with that. Okay, you want to develop nuclear weapon? Go ahead, do it. Okay, why? Because I, I do play poker. I'm a gambler. You have poker face. You know, I I learn how to play poker gambling game. Okay, so yeah, you like just like North Korea. Okay, you play this game with nuclear weapons. Okay, I I I can see that okay but i'm not getting into the game with you okay why i'd rather play blackjack or poker card game or board game maybe traditional iranian persian game okay one-on-one -on -one. i would rather have a drink with you based on vodka whiskey or maybe traditionally iranian Alcoholic beverage, okay. Let's be friends, okay. I love Iranians. You're great wrestlers, okay. But I, I, I'm not gonna play any wrestling game with Iranian people, okay. Because I'm not very good at wrestling, okay. So, but I'd love to play some board game, card game with you, Mr. Prime Minister of Iran, okay. One on one basis, okay. But when it comes to nuclear. Weapon game, no, no. You, you, you do what you gotta do, okay? Because I don't think you're gonna bomb Israel. I don't think you will actually use nuclear weapon, okay? North Korea, they never use their nuclear weapon. Bargaining chip, okay? I don't have time for that, okay? But with Mr. Kim Jong Un, your friend, or you, my friend, okay? I would love to play these video games. Maybe Galaga, Bubble Bubble, back in the day, Super Mario, or some card games like Blackjack, Poker. All right, Bridges. I don't know how to play the game, okay? But if you're North Korean leader, Korean, North Korean traditional kind of game, card game, or Iranian traditional game, okay? Yeah, I'd love to play that, but not nuclear bomb game, okay? Because I don't want to deal with that stuff, okay? So, and I don't think you will ever use nuclear bombs against any other countries. Why? Because I know you are smart people. Iranians, North Koreans, Chinese, Russians, they're smart people, I know that. Why? Because I'm smart too. I'm like, I am not like Trump, Obama, Biden. I'm not like them, okay? I know you're smart. North Koreans, Russians, Chinese, Iranians. I know you're smart people, okay? 
Why? Because I'm smart too, just like you. I'm not Trump, Biden, Obama. They are not very smart people, okay? But I'm smart, just like you, Iranians, Chinese, Russians, North Koreans, okay? I'm smart just like you, okay? So, yeah. Okay. So, I'll, I I will never get play into your nuclear bomb games, okay? Let's play some video games, Galaga, Bubble Bubble, Rambo, back in the days, okay? I'm old school, okay? Whoa. Card games, poker, blackjack, bridges, I don't know how to play that game. I heard about it, okay? Or some board game, okay? Yeah, Monopoly. Or your Iranian, Russian, those Korean traditional games. I would love to learn it. Then I play with you, okay? With vodka, whiskey, soju, whatever, okay? Whiskey, right? Because by now I'm president of the United States. I have designated drivers. Okay? Yeah. Some hotel room, okay. No problem, okay. I just go to bed, pay my drivers, okay. And sleep about, dream about world peace. Then I think about you in my dream, okay. Maybe we play blackjack or not Russian roulette. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, some poker, okay, with just jack in the box, jack, like this hidden card, wild card, and that's me. I'm a joker. Jokester, prankster, okay. Yeah. But I also dream about world peace. Yeah, I think we can do it, okay. Please appreciate I learned your languages. I wanted to love your languages, Persian, Korean, I know, and Russian. Yeah, I am still studying it, okay? Because I wanted to communicate with you, with your own language, out of respect for your own country's culture. Because I'm a great admirer of your country, Iran, North Korea, Russia. Your people, hardworking, law-abiding citizens of your countries. Just like in America. America is just like that. Okay. I want to love up. I want to learn more about your culture, history, language. Okay. I'm a student. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cut scene. Okay. So that's what I would say. World peace. Okay. That's all I have to say, okay? Yeah, it's about three hours today, okay? So, thank you. God bless you for the generous to come, okay? Let's be the saviors of the universe, just like Jesus Christ and Gautama Siddhartha Buddha, Prophet Muhammad Allah and Confucius, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Confucius, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr., Immanuel Kant, Arthur Schopenhauer, whoever your favorite philosophers, saints, okay? Yeah, Jane Goodell, whoever your favorites, okay? Yeah, Ro great role models, okay? So they're not perfect, but there's some good things to learn from them, okay? James Madison, Thomas Jefferson. Abraham Lincoln, eh, just a little bit, okay, yeah. But James Buchanan, I think he was a good man, okay. James, President James Buchanan, yeah, good and bad, okay. But James Buchanan, he, I think, I don't think it's fair to characterize James Buchanan as the worst president of the United States, okay. Yeah, he was not perfect, but I think he did very good things before he was the president, okay. Expansion of American territory. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye. God bless you. Happy July 4th. Bye. Thank you.